been up to? Um, what have I been up to? Yeah. Couldn't tell you. Not a lot of surfing. Nah. No, nah, not a Why lot not? of surfing. Just don't. Just it's like middle of winter. It's not very cold. The waves aren't very good, and I my motivation is minimal at best. Is the surf season? When is the surf season in New Zealand? It's that's an interesting question. That's like something who something that someone would say if they've never really surfed before, like a commoner. But it's good, and that's why we've got you here as like a sounding board, someone who asks the stupid questions. Well, I thought surfing in New Zealand was pretty much all year round, but it's well, it is all year round. But then at the same time... It's it, not. Well, no, the majority of people are going to surf during the summer months. Yeah. It just makes sense. Because it's warm. Because it's warmer. It's easier to get in the water. But for the best waves, it's going to be when it's a little bit colder. Like like May. May. Yeah, May's probably the best. May's best probably months. the best. Yeah. When's the comps? Are they any time of year or do they always have them around that May, April? Look, I don't even know if there are really any comps in New Zealand. Yeah, true. Yeah. Good place to set one up. In New Zealand? Yeah. Yeah. If there was a rogie that wanted to put one on, New Zealand would be a good option. Like do a do a big professional a, surfing event. Yeah. Yeah, but then why would we want to have professional surfing events when we've already got like rugby and rugby league? We don't need any yeah. more sport. We're already tapped out. And ball sports are my favourite. Yeah, ball sports are, they're generally the favourite of every New Zealander. We're really fixated on balls and like the handling of balls and then Passing your ball on to someone else for them to hold your ball, mm. you know, like stripping rugby. the ball off each other. Yeah, um, you know, I like to protect the balls actually when yeah. I'm playing because I don't like my balls to be stripped off me. No, nah, no one so. likes their balls stripped off them. But, but that happens. You can do that in in rugby league. I think you can do. You can strip someone else's ball mm. if you're one on one. If it's one on one. If it's but if it's with multiple Men. multiple like gang situation. Well, not gang. What do you call it? Team? Um, like it's a gang? It's an team. orgy. Well, it's not an orgy. That's an orgy of men. No, no, no. Not an no. orgy of men. Oh, it's that's like what you call when a whole, like uh, if you've got a swan, you've got a gaggle of swans. But if you've got a whole bunch of men together, it's an orgy of men. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So that is what happens in rugby league a lot of the time. It's a big orgy of men getting together, yeah. trying to get their hands on, on balls. Well, that's because ball. they're trying to stop the offload. Yeah. So that's why they sort of gang, gang it up. And um, but if it's one on one, definitely allowed to strip the ball. Yeah, you can strip ball the ball if it's one on one situation. Mm. And that's my favourite part about watching men in, in short tight shorts aggressively, um, you know, handle each other's. Uh, and it's funny with rugby. What they've done is I've actually said um, hands off the ball when you're in the mall. Is is that a slogan? That, that, yeah, it's a yeah. real rule. Hands so off the ball the when you're in the mall. So when you're in the mall, yeah, you know, with your misses and that. You're not allowed to... No, uh, you you mean the mall, because that's a part of the game, is a mall, right? Like a ruck in a mall? Yeah. Yeah. Or M-A-U-L. Yeah, M-A- M-A-U-L. A mall. Yeah, mall. Mall. When they mauling up the field. Gotcha. Yeah. Rugby's but a weird fucking it, sport. It is weird, man. Rugby and league, those those games like that. Very handsy. Very, very handsy. handsy. Very intimate games. There's a lot of like breathing on necks. So much gently. aggression. And they wear yeah. those little bras under their rugby tops now. Do they? Have you seen that? I, I guess they do. It. They do have large pectoral muscles, mm. but I've never really been into rugby or league. To um, be fair, when we start talking about rugby's and ball sports, it gets boring pretty quick. Thank fuck, this is a surfing podcast. Yeah, I know. We haven't talked about surfing yet, but we thought we'd start at the very lower tier of sports. Mm. Well, in New Zealand, it's it's considered the highest tier of sports, yeah. ball sports. But we're upside down. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're the other way around. We put emphasis on surfing, which is, in New Zealand, it's way down the, the hierarchy, the totem pole of sports. Fuck um, yeah. It would be like, in the, it'd be like 21st. Yeah, and, and I guess that's why we don't Maybe really... Not. That's why we don't, we don't really have a large following mm. of this podcast is because we're... I mean, I wouldn't say we're doing it on the wrong sport, mm. but in terms of our geographical location and the popularity of the sport that we talk about on this podcast... You know we are we are down the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Um. We're on we're bootlickers basically. Yeah. For sporting podcasts in in New Zealand, it's like it's like doing an ice fishing podcast, but you live in Dubai. That's a great analogy. Yeah. I, I'd say that's exactly what this podcast is. And we're we're pushing shit uphill basically. Yeah. And then so the algorithms are like, what the fuck, surfing? No one, there's no one to share it with. We're no one have to does look that. International. Wait, it's not about rugby? Are there any Kiwis listening to this right now? I bet there's not. I bet there's a very minimal amount of Kiwis. I reckon 5 to 8% maximum. Yeah. And if you are a Kiwi and you're listening to this, 
please just comment on one of my social media posts and just say, look, I listen to that, but I am a Kiwi and I do listen. Because at this point, I'm not sure if there are actually any New Zealanders mm. that watch or listen to this show. Yeah. And and that's the dismal state of surfing in New Zealand at the moment. Yeah. But that's all right. We're getting a wave pool. We are getting a wave pool. That's going to mainstream it, man. It's still some, some ways off. Yeah, what, a year away? Um, or... They got to dig the I hole think first. it's a couple years off yeah, at least. It's a couple years. It's a couple years off. Oh, I hope they have like a really good air section. One thing that I've wanted from this wave pool is I want them to hurry up and finish it so that I still have like working knees yeah. and, and a body that is capable of maybe still doing airs in a wave pool. What do you reckon you've got left time wise? I reckon at the moment, if I come back from this current injury, which I sustained, I think it was three days ago, Just I just got out of bed and just the body didn't work. Um, if I can come back from this injury, uh, I think maybe a year, a year and a half. <laughs> Shit, we're getting that type of time. Yeah, you know, like so 18 not, months. A lot, not a lot of time left in this in this old carcass. So I'm hoping that they hurry up with the wave pull. Mm. And, and that's another reason... Well, I was a little bit disappointed that I didn't get invited to the stab high in the wave pool in Japan. What the fuck's up with that? Why were they doing that? Because I've got such a small window. So it's just like, Mm. you guys, you've got to invite me now while I'm still able to potentially get my 110 kg frame off the top of a wave. Mm. Unassisted by by a jet ski. So Stab's got a comp in Japan, which is what? Just a wave pool comp? Yeah, it's a wave pool comp, but it's like, it's, it's strictly aerials. Oh yeah! So, so you drop in, do a couple of pumps, get some speed up, do an air. That that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah, judge you on the air. Yep, just one move, one air. So that's all you worry about. That's it. That's it. Oh, you wow. don't even you don't even have to really. So that'll think. be dudes doing kick flips and things. Well, I I don't think so. Uh, the one guy who does like finger flips and stuff. I oh, actually Zeke does finger flips. I think mm. he calls himself the wave pull goat or king of the wave pull or something. He he loves talking about himself. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Very high praise for himself. Yeah. Uh. But he, I, I think he could do pretty well because yeah. he's got Is his he finger it? flips. He's in it. Yeah. They've they've put him in. Yeah. They put him in, in it, and they they didn't put me. I mean, to be fair, I can't do finger flips. I have quite a limited repertoire when it comes to doing ears. Yeah. But I think. People would want to see the impossible happening, which is you, a 110 kg human yeah, yeah. boosting out above the lip. I think if I completed any kind of air, that would be uh, a, a marvel. That that would be a man defying the laws of physics. Well, that's what I was going to say is maybe they did look at the science and go, hold on, how big is this pool? All right, what are the waves we're doing? Would cool. I fit in the pool? Scientifically, can he do an air? Can, can he can generate Luke, enough speed? Can Luke fit in the pool? Probably not. Yeah, and and that's what sucks about being this big, but also physically talented and extremely athletic. Frustrating it's, for guys like you, isn't it? It's frustrating because people look at me and think, oh man, he's too big and too slow to do, like, fuck all really, on a surfboard. And and that's why I, when people ask me what size surfboard I ride. It's actually amazing your stats on, on the, your, your, what do you call them? Numbers on on board to weight ratio. Yeah, You're that, a that's, freak that's, of nature. That's the thing is that people ask me, oh, what what size board do you ride? And I give them these dimensions of a board. That In the five is, foot range? No, no, it's <laughs> six foot two. Six two. Yeah, so I, I give them the dimensions of, of my standard surfboard that I ride. And they're just like, oh, oh shit. I, I was thinking more you maybe ride like a mini mail or yeah, something like that. Yeah, mini mail. Yeah, but it's because my athleticism can make up for... My size. A foot of surfboard length. A, uh, yeah, probably a foot of surfboard length and maybe 10 litres of volume. 10 litres of volume. Yeah. Because you ride something that a guy that's going to be about 80 kilos will ride. 85. Yes. Yeah. But I try and make up for it with, with my enthusiasm and determination. And, and a lot of it comes down to... Why do you ride it so small for your weight? Is it because you can? Well, if you had a bigger board, would you be able to throw it around less? I, I think it's because I can and also because I'd be limited in some of the some of the surfing that I would be able to do. You like doing if I was riding a bigger board. Yeah. Yeah. And you but like to be able to do what you do on that size board, so that's Yeah, I like it. to be able to do what I do. Mm. A- and I think a lot of it also is confidence. I'm I'm pretty confident in the mm. way I surf and just confident in the way I am as a person and, and that's not the sort of thing that just comes overnight. You don't just 
No. You don't just wake up confident. You no. got, yeah, it's actually something that you have to work on. And yep. and whenever I've worked with uh, with surfers and tried to improve other people's surfing, that's one one of the key attributes that I tell people is that you really got to work on your confidence and, and training your brain to become more confident and let confidence into your body. But how do you let it be real? Because I try and then I know that it's just a bit of a fake confidence and then I go in to do the thing and I, I'm i not that good at it and then uh, my confidence just gets whipped out from under me and then I was like, right, I'm going to start again. I'm allowed to be here. I'm confident again. I'm going to go again. And then the imposter syndrome kicks in and yeah. I know that I'm not allowed to be, I'm nothing like them. I'm never really going to be. Mm. So... Is this specifically for supreme athletes or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 basically. But the only way that you can get to that level of being an elite athlete is by having that confidence. And like you said, if if you feel like you've got imposter syndrome and it's something that isn't true to who you are and it's something that you haven't worked on, then you aren't going to be able to maintain that confidence and self-doubt will creep in. Mm. But I've really had to work on my confidence because when I was a kid, like – Growing up, I wasn't very confident. Um, so what what I did to work on that was I, I used to, and I still do. Really, though? You really weren't? What? Weren't confident? No, I wasn't confident. That's what I'm saying. It's I a actually nice had, moment. It's I, a bit of vulnerability. Can you just let me fucking talk? I'm Sorry. trying to tell you like a quite a heartwarming, it's heartfelt nice. story. Yeah, I'm just feeling the warmth. Yeah, Sorry, well, I, get, I get cuddly. Well, if you let me actually explain it. But now you've cut me off I'll again because you always do this. Yeah. And then I feel like you've really cut in half the emphasis that I was telling you, like, that I uh, my childhood. I'm trying to bring out my childhood and you've yeah. interrupted me. I'm sorry. But what I was trying to say was that when I was a kid, I wasn't very confident. I, you know, my hair was too long. People would call me like a dirty little hippie. You know, and um, I wasn't as tall as I was. I was only like, when I was a kid, I was only like six foot one. Um, and and so my confidence was quite shot. Mm. And so what I did was to, to build on that confidence, I would go into supermarkets and, and just buy solely toilet paper. I knew that if I went to a supermarket and walked out with only, say, like a, a dozen rolls of three-play toilet paper... Everyone around me would think, wow, that guy needs to do either like a massive shit or he needs to do a whole bunch of shits, which is a very uncom- uncomfortable kind of situation to be in mm. when everyone around you thinks that you have just a whole mess of diarrhea going on, mm. that you have like IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, I see. or you've, you, you're like really backed up and you didn't need to do a massive shit. When everyone around you looks at you like that, it's an uncomfortable feeling. So what I would do is I would go to the supermarket and I would just walk out with just like a massive thing of just toilet Family paper. Family toilet paper. You know, because it, 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 it meant that I had to overcome all that judgment from, from everyone around me. I had to have confidence to be able to walk out of that supermarket with my head held high whilst I had a 12-pack a of three-ply toilet paper under my arm. So what do you do now that you've worked on your confidence and you're so extremely confident? Do you just sort of go to the supermarket, grab a bottle of lube, a nice new hardcore copy of some soft porn and then maybe some tampons? Uh, Just that. And then people are like, wow, look at you. What are you going to do with the tampons? (laughs) I still do the toilet paper. Still do the toilet paper. I'd never really thought of like getting the the whole lube thing and the just get lube, yeah, some hardcore, and a pack condoms, of, I packet think. of jelly babies. No, because that means you're going somewhere else. If you just get the stuff for yourself, that's that, that's, that, that's to be extreme honest, confidence. To be honest, that sounds like a little bit dirty, like a packet of jerky, some soft core. No, I no. To be honest, I was just doing the whole thing with the the twelve. Rolls of three ply toilet paper was it was relatable to everyone. Everyone has been through that. Everyone has gone and purchased toilet paper, mm. and they've all felt the beady eyes of judgmental people burning holes in them as they walk out of there, thinking that everyone is just judging them because they're a big old pooper. Mm. But not everyone goes and buys lube and hardcore hustler magazines and tampons. That's a very peculiar list of items for someone to go buy from the supermarket but everyone's gone and bought toilet paper I tell you what it takes a lot of confidence to walk up to the self-service checkouts next to four other guys and buy that stuff 
you try and put a bit of hardcore hustler down or softcore actually in my in my line of work and um, some jerky. They look at you like, what are you? And doing? that's understandable because that's fucking sick. Yeah. That's well, just weird. Well, okay. So anyway, I yeah, I really worked on my confidence, and now I'm 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 confident, and I'm not weird, mm. like because that's weird. Yeah, okay, that's just weird. Yeah, you're right. I wanted to be confident. I didn't want to be. And I don't have any. Confidence. I didn't want to be weird. I didn't want people to think that I was, you know, some kind of uh, creep. Weirdo creep. Yeah, sex sexually um, disturbed sort of. Yeah, yeah. I was going for someone with confidence. Yeah. Not someone who could potentially be charged on sex crimes later in life. And you're right. And no, I don't have any confidence now. Yeah. It hasn't worked. And so you probably don't have confidence because you spent all your time... I just carry a lot of shame. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. See, there's a fine line between confidence and shame. Well, it's good to sort of litmus test two ideas there and understand for someone who's lacking in confidence and listening to this and taking your tips on board to go, yeah, cool, stick to the toilet paper. Just stick to the toilet paper. Yeah. I mean, I, kn- I know that you came from a different upbringing than I did and that those items were something that you and your family members would often get on the shopping list. So mm. that is probably what you had to do at the supermarket. Not just me and Dad. Or just you and Dad. But mm. for me, my whole thing was like toilet paper. Yeah, that makes and sense. And maybe, maybe, maybe condoms. Yeah. You know, because we've all been through the whole going to the supermarket oh, buying yeah. condoms. Yeah. Yeah, small ones for you. Um, but you always get those like extra thin, or you try to get the extra thin ones. I always yeah try the to. lightweight featherweight lightweight ones. featherweights yeah yeah lightweight featherweights. Um, yeah. Anyway, well that's quite interesting. So that's how I worked on my confidence to get better at surfing, and that's why I still ride surfboards that are uh, quite small, because I have the confidence in my ability to be able to go out and surfboards that are seemingly undersized. They are undersized. But that's they're okay. not. They're not. They're not. Not, not if you have the right mentality. Oh, no, you're truthfully not. Like you display that by getting the longest barrel and raglan ever ridden with proof of it. Exactly. On there was an eight second tube, the longest yeah. tube that anyone's ever got on the ledge through all the sections, and there's video proof of it. And I got that because I have the confidence. Did you get that on a six two twenty eight liter? It don't, look, it doesn't matter what I was fucking riding. It doesn't matter. You just to riding confidence. I was riding. I was riding confidence. I was riding a a high of mm. confidence. You ever, you ever surfed high? Like in a higher altitude? Yeah. Nah. They've probably got way. See, that that's the thing. Like, when you think about it, like every wave on the planet is at the same altitude, right? Apart from wave pools. So when you surf in a wave pool now, because there are wave pools at, at higher altitudes mm. than a surf break. You've so got to get now, you, now you are actually going to be able to surf high. Like, yeah. quite literally. If you had like a, a wave pool in Durban, is it Durban that's in the middle of... No, where are they? Playing? Dubai. Or somewhere that's like high Dhabi? altitude... How I, I was thinking South Africa. High yeah. altitude where they kick the ball in rugby so to get back, and it goes way further than it does if you do it in Sydney. Okay. So Because it, cause it's different altitudes and yes. different air pressures. That would be the same with surfing ears. Yeah. It would be better for ears, I think, if they had wave pools at a higher altitude. So if sure. they start doing these comps, you'll have to go, look, you got a three-foot ear, but it was in high, high altitude. Yeah. He wasn't doing that at sea level. Yeah, that's true. At sea level, and you'd have to take into account the each maths. wave pool yeah. and where it is situated, like geographically, what altitude it's at. Wave pools is the biggest change to surfing ever, eh? Imagine if you put a wave pool on top of Mount Everest. You'd be able to do like 12 foot ears. You'd be fucking killing it. Come out doing a 720. Look, that's where Stab should be having their, their wave pool surfing aer- aerial contest. Not in Japan. Not Japan. I'm, I haven't looked at the geographical location of where the wave pool is, but I feel like they could get it a lot higher, like get altitude going a, a higher altitude, so that the airs could be more impressive. And yeah. that, that's what they want. They want to see the best aerial surfing on the planet. So why not have it at an altitude that is more conducive to producing high aerials? The waves might be a little bit bigger too. Like if if you get the motor, that I think they would be because yeah. they'd be less. What is it? Less gravity, gravity at a higher altitude? Something. Yeah. It's something like that. Look. Uh, I think I, just less air pressure. There's less air pressure. Yeah. So there's less air pressure, then it's gonna it's probably gonna create a bigger wave. Yeah. It's gonna be easier. The s- people that know science will probably tell us more correctly there. Well, we know enough science. Yeah. Because I just guessed air pressure. Yeah. But that's fine. Yeah. That's um okay. 
Well, I guess we've started the podcast, have we? I'm just looking at the agenda here. Yeah, we started ages ago. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. Mm, Thanks for yep. joining us. This is episode number what? Oh, I don't know. We lost 54. Late 50s? Should yeah. we stop counting? Mid 50s? No, we still, I don't know if we still have to keep counting or not We counting. can just stop now. Because you're not good at maths anyway. No. Nah. So it's going to be harder for you to you I know, don't even know. to remember where we're at. Mm. And I just don't have a good memory. Okay, so we'll just cancel that. I'll yeah. just make a note there. That's good. Good. So uh, on the um, agenda today, uh, you've got, well... Uh, what did we even have? No, there was something about... Did you see? Have you seen any of my recent videos? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one when you're in the forest and you're in the outdoors, competing with the elements. Yeah. To uh, and you're going to the surf break on the east west. Yeah, something like that. It's yeah. fucking stupid. That's good. No, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Why? Oh the fuck! I don't know anymore, man. I don't know if anyone watches my fucking videos. They watch them, man. Yeah. It's funny coming up with that all the time for you, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but then I don't know, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like sometimes you make them. And I'm like, am I? What am I making this for? Am I making this f- because I I feel obliged to make a video, or am I making this because this is something that I'm passionate? Ab- no, not not passionate about. But you know, like, is it a topic that um that riles me up? Because yeah. a lot of the times when when there's a topic, something that kind of not pisses me off, but something that I, I really emotion. I really think about. Mm-hmm. You know, it makes me feel something, and mm. then th- th- that's, yeah, that's kind it. of like the best. That's the best time to make something. Yeah. But then sometimes I feel like eh, I'm just making something for the sake of making something. Did and you feel not like to that? say that's a bad thing? Did you feel like that about this? That one in the in the woods. Um. No, it's something that I've been thinking about for a while. But then I start making them, and I'm just like, oh. You know what I mean? Like you just don't have that super passion for yeah. for for something. Okay. Yeah. But I guess that's normal when you're doing things. Yeah. You know, if someone who goes to work and does something else, they're not going to like it every day of the week. Nah, nah. But I mean, I do enjoy the process of of making the videos. Mm. But um, yeah, it's just not everyone has the same amount of enthusiasm from from myself when I make it. Yes. You know. Quite normal. Yeah. I just think that's a normal thing, right? With everything. Yeah. Like if we look at love making again, we both know that you fall off the radar on that at least once every six months. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't put any pressure on myself to perform in the bedroom where I do put pressure on myself to create entertainment for other people. Yeah, that's right. That just comes naturally. Out. It's just like you're surfing. Yeah, you're just good at it. Yeah, and it's quite disturbing that you know that I'm good at it. But yeah. I guess you look at me and you just kind of assume that that's probably the case. Mm. And sometimes assumptions are right. And in this case, I guess it is. And you do write a shorter board there too? Uh, sorry? A broad? A sorry? Sh- a shorter what? broad. A shorter broad. Someone, she's six too. <laughs> sorry, I just tried to link them, but it doesn't nah, work. No, you tried. At least you tried. That was good. Because we haven't had enough... See, this is another thing. This whole podcast that we've been doing... And then sometimes it feels forced, and then sometimes it's like, you know, you don't have enough sexual innuendo. <laughs> you need me to have more? Yeah, well, it's like, because it used to fuck me off. Because, like, every, you know, maybe every five minutes you'd just smatter a whole bunch of sexual innuendo into this podcast. And then you haven't you haven't been bringing the sexual innuendo lately. Well, because it used to fuck you off. Yeah, but I think, but that's what, what we both needed. Oh, uh, yeah. Was the sexual innuendo? Okay. Was he saying a whole bunch of stupid shit, which would give some fire and some passion to this podcast, if you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do. So, so it actually feels something. So I need it. So maybe that's a confidence thing. I, I, I think I you need to go and, and get your lube, get your get your um, tampons, soft, get your core. soft core porn magazine. Um, I can't handle the hardcore. No one can handle the hardcore. It's I mean, the hardcore heavy. can handle the hardcore. But, yeah, but I think maybe that's something that you should work on, is work on your confidence. Get back to the old feces or mm. old Luke and, and and come strapped with a little bit more sexual innuendo and just try and bring this podcast back to the glory days that it used to be. Yep. I will come with some heavy sexual innuendo next time. Oh, see, there was a missed opportunity. You said, I will come. Yeah, I said it slowly. Yeah, I but not slow enough to really have any kind of emphasis on, on the come. The guy, the people said. that heard that would have known that I was, I was coming. That's where you were going. Yeah. That's where you were going. Well, I didn't want to be so obvious straight off the bat. Mm. 
I think you got to whip it out slowly. Yeah, true. Like if you came out with some like dirty shit right now, it would it wouldn't hit. There would be no emphasis on it because yeah. it was almost expected because that's what we've been talking about. It'd be like dropping a tit at a mammogram appointment, you know? It's expected. Oh, so it's just like you, yeah, you, you're not fl- you you got your tits out. Yeah, but it's about the context of when yeah. you got your tits out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna get my tits out later on, and it's gonna be perfect. A mammogram. No. Oh, just in, yeah. in general. Yeah. Well, n- not on this podcast. I hope you don't get your tits out. No, not on the podcast. This Fuck, for, these microphones suck. This is because for kids. It's, no, it's not. This is a kids show. Dude, you know what's disturbing? <laughs> what? Is when I make these videos, I've told you about this, and then I get I get children coming up to me, and they're like, hey, I really like... I re-. Sorry, it's more like, hey, I really like your videos that you make. And I said, oh, why the fuck are you watching them? That's something we need to speak to the parents of the Raglan Surf Report audience about. No, and, and that's what... That, and. That's what's disturbing is mm. that these parents, these poor children, are fucked mm. because their parents are irresponsible letting them watch the videos that I make. And it's not that my videos are like X rated or, you know, they're not over no. over the top. No, they're not. But children shouldn't be watching. They're not safe for kids. They're not for kids. And when I upload a YouTube video, it says, is this video for kids? There's a little option that you have to have to check. And every single time I said, no, it's not for kids. Yet, I still get kids watching them. There's something wrong with the world. I'm guilty of it, actually. I showed my kids your work yesterday when you threw the French bulldog in the ocean. Oh, but no, but that's fine because your kids are like, their brains are so small, they're not going to remember anything that's fair. from this age when they're older. Yeah, Pax is fucking got an extra couple of chromosomes and multiple yeah. spots. And Gia... She's lacking visually. Yeah. Well, yeah, your 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 children. Um, but that's the thing with kids; like, you don't actually have to worry about raising them until they're what, like nine, ten, because well, they don't remember anything. And and whatever you do, honestly, it has no bearing on on the their future selves. As a parent, you only spend about three hours a day with them. Yeah, because you know the wife does a lot of it. Then the daycare kicks in. And then, the, you know, restricted by courts. Yeah. So it's only, you don't actually have that it's, much influence. Yeah, there's very little parenting to really mm. do if you are a parent and you do it properly. Yeah. But no, it's something that parents needed to be aware of out watching there. Don't show this shit to kids. Yeah, it don't. It may seem harmless, but the subliminal messaging will fuck them up. Yeah. They'll it's get into some good. real weird kinky stuff early. Um, and and uh, the main thing is, like... If for some fucked up reason, I don't know how, but like if a kid looked at you as some kind of role model or something, oh, yeah, that would pros- that. possibly be the worst thing that could ever happen to your child or or your life in general. So don't show your kids any 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 of this content. I mean, I am kind of working on a children's show for YouTube, but that's an entirely different kettle of fish. Is it for kids or for men who like kids? It's for for children. Oh, it's, it's for a, children. It's for children about children. It's for children about children. Oh, yeah. You know Blippy? You yep. would know Blippy. Blippy? Yeah, so it's like Blippy. Um, it's basically just, I, I'm copying Blippy. Blippy. Do you know how much money Blippy makes? I'd say millions. Millions of dollars. And the Blippy, the real Blippy, stopped being Blippy and made his brother be Blippy. He's like, oh, I'm just going to sit at the top now. You Blippy. Here, wear my uniform. You look like is, me. Is that what happened with Blippy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well that, that's what I kind of thought was like if I do some videos like Blippy, but then I don't know how I can make them like they don't even need to be different. I'll just copy just Blippy. Just copy Blippy. He's copied everyone else from before. Yeah. He's got original songs. He's pretty clever. But remember how there were like rumors as to what happened with the Blues Clues guy? And yeah. he like, you know, jumped off a bridge or in front of a train or something? Did he? No, well, he's he d- still around. Yeah, but he wasn't, he didn't. He just left no, the show. No, he's the front man for Panic at the Disco. Yeah, that's that right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so he carried on just been on his musical career. Mm. And Pursuit was like, why is Blippi all of a sudden changed? They thought he had, you know, tightened the wristband a little too tight and things. But he hasn't. He's just got his brother doing it. Yeah, I mean, there's only so much that shit that you could do as a fully grown adult man until you start losing your shit. You implode. Yeah. Um. But anyway, what were we on about? Oh, we were talking about surfing um, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your um, well, you just some of the local, the recent Raglan surf reports. You oh know. yeah, yeah. I mean, they are what they are. I did enjoy doing the one the other day with your dog. Yeah. I don't think I enjoyed it as much as your dog enjoyed it though. He had a good day down the beach. He's been spewing up sand for three days. Yeah, you're telling me that. You actually showed me a little sample of his spew. Yeah. Very so crusty. There was a part inside this um video that you cut out. Mm. 
So you made a video of, of how you can test for sharks, and you're using a French bulldog. The, can you tell me, because um, I haven't seen the footage, when, when Wolf, wherever he is, yep. was swimming back to shore, he got smashed in yes. real life. Yes. But it's not in the video. Nah, nah. I had to cut that bit out. How bad is it? It's, it's pretty bad. Well, it's not that bad. But the thing is, I had to cut that out because I, I may not seem like... But I'm actually kind of, of a little bit terrified of some of the fucking weird cunts on the internet who will try and tear me down. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, maybe... Like, I don't like want to be... I don't want... Yeah, exactly. I don't want to be reported to the SPCA or... Right. Or... Any animal cruelty or foundation. What, what's the one? OSH or whatever Osh. it is. Occupational... Poor work. justice, it's called. Safety. P-A-W. Poor justice. Yeah. See, because that could have happened if someone saw that video of Wolf getting smoked in the shore break. So I've just said I'm not showing that to, to anyone. Will you show it now? Can we? Yes. Look, what does it look like? What happens to him? He well, nothing really. Can you paint? What happens? I haven't seen the footage, and I was filming, so I couldn't mm. see what happened to him. What happened to him? Okay, so the thing is, Wolf had a great time, right? Yeah. And that's all that matters. You keep telling yourself so that you feel better about. What he had a great time. He had a fucking great time. He had. A I steak. mean, I don't talk dog. Yeah. But he had a great time, and now I've realised that I'm starting to feel like a bit of a hypocrite because I have talked shit on people who send their dogs out into the ocean to to go surfing, because they don't know if their dogs are actually having a good time, mm. you know. But in saying that, it, Wolf had a great time. He did have a great time. You could see it on his shit little French bulldog face. Yeah. You know, which shows no emotion at all because you, it's just stuck that way from years of inbreeding that breed. Yeah. And um, It's hard to see them smile through an underbite, but he was. He was smiling. Mm -hmm. You could tell he had a great... He just fucking... He ran off. He was trying to eat the steak that we had. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he got picked up by the shore and just dumped And on slammed it. into the shore break. Yeah, and slammed into the sand. Was he rolling he along? He did a couple of little tumbles. And it was, was it too hard out for you to put in the video? <laughs> oh, man, like so I said, I I wanted to put it in there because it's such a great shot. And can you slow it down? Can you do a slow oh, version? Oh yeah, fuck! Oh, no, I will. I will. I will put it. I'll put do it on something the with it? somewhere. Yeah, I got to do something with it. It was a great shot, but yeah. you can see, like on that video, he's just about to get smoked by that wave. Because poor little wolf, he's like because he's got such a tiny neck or lack of neck. Yeah, he can't. Turn over his shoulder no, to see if there's a set behind him. Nah. Plus, also he's we a dog. <laughs> Plus, also he's a dog, and he doesn't realise what a set wave looks like. Yeah, you know, so that it just kind of slammed him. He needed to turn around and paddle over it, and he then come. Yeah, he, he needed to either stop. Like I'm pretty sure we were yelling at him. We was like, "Whoa, <laughs> stop, stop!" But because he's a dog, he didn't actually understand uh, what we were uh, saying. I was saying, "Sit." He can't. Yeah, he was <laughs> swimming. He was swimming. Sit down. Sit down. And he's got those little... Oh, he's really got a life jacket, so yeah, you can't get in trouble with poor justice, actually. Is that true? If yeah. If he were in a life jacket? Yeah, you, he was safe. Oh, perfect. Yeah, he was padded. Yeah. That's why he rolls over and gets up. He was fine. That yeah. life jacket, man. If Hey, look, if he didn't, wasn't wearing that life jacket, Definitely this would be a completely different story. He would have put his back out. Like, yeah. actually, I, I mean, we that. wouldn't even be recording this podcast because <laughs> you'd be wailing the, wailing in a corner, like the vet. fucking crying about your dead dog that drowned while we were trying to film some shit video. With his ashes in a box. Yeah, with his ashes. We'd be going back to that beach to scatter his ashes. That's where <laughs> we'd be right now if he wasn't wearing that life jacket. So, kids, if you're watching this, which you fucking better not be, always wear a life jacket. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. a helmet. Wear a helmet on land, life jacket in the ocean. And I think it's really important to say at this moment that animal rights are something we really, really um, care about here at the Raglan Surf Port. Fuck, speak for yourself. I don't really care. Well, you do. You know, no, I don't. About, I, fucking whales the I, week. I fucking slang dried meat for a living. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I refuse to be a hypocrite. And let's not I don't about care about animal rights. I really don't. Yeah. Yeah. What about travelling them live, exporting, on boats? Don't. Yeah, look, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, that's a that's New how Zealand, I live my life, friend. New Zealand government policy. Out of sight, there. out of mind. That is how the New Zealand government rolls, eh? No, they banned it. Banned and now what? That, um, they banned live exports, and now they want to bring it back because it makes heaps of cash. Yeah, true. Because you can say to like countries like hey, your meat's fresh. Yeah, you get New Zealand beef; it'll still be live when it gets to you. You cut its head off. That is that is good, eh? That is a good That's way to fresh, do it. That's fresh, bro. 
But you know, in New Zealand, we are... But I are... think it's quite stressful in the little cages at sea. Oh, I'm sure it would be. But in New Zealand, you know, we are out quite... Out of mind. We are quite hypocritical. Oh, yeah. Like, you know how we don't want, like, offshore drilling, oil oil mining, whatever the fuck, it, all that shit, gas exploration. Yeah. But we want all the fuel, right? Yeah. Because we need it. We need it. Because we can't, you know, survive sustainably off renewable energy, yep. which would be amazing if we could. But we can't. But we can't. So, but we we, so we need the we need all the gas, we need the oil, but we don't want to get it here, so we'll get it from another country. Yeah. And no no problems with that. Thanks, Australia. I think they're yep. giving us quite a bit of oil out of there. Yeah, Aussie would be pretty good with that. Yeah. I mean, that's my only little political thing. And I actually, like I said with everything, I'm pretty much on the fence with everything. I'm not, that's not a hard stance at all. Nah. No, it's not yep. a hard stance. Yeah. Yeah. On the fence with everything. Oh, yeah, basically. Sexuality? No, I knew that was coming. Yeah. I, I was about to say it before you did, but I was about to have a sip of my beer as well. I knew that was coming. It was It was well lined up. Are you gonna are you gonna beat around the bush there? Are you, is, you, is that on the? Fence? I'm not. I'm not answering that question. Yeah, fair enough. You I'm on the you. fence with basically everything. Me too, man. <sighs> are we up to goofy footer of the week yet? Yeah. I feel like we're probably there. Yeah. This is just fucking stumbled our way through this we're podcast. We're motoring through this podcast. Mm. This is. A, I mean, this is a serious question. Does this podcast have any substance? Like, is there any point for anyone to ever listen to this? I think it might take their mind off um, things that is going on in the real world and they just sit and listen to themselves and uh, listen to us help numb everything. Yeah. We're I, basically like a local anesthetic. Yeah. I would like to think of this... Brain. I'd like to think of this podcast as a great way for people to put things into perspective. Well, like, put things into perspective in their life. Mm. Like, they could, they could think, all right, you know... My fucking dog just drowned, you know, like with almost what happened to you the back. other day with yeah. steak on its back. Um, and uh, I lost my job, whatever. But then they could listen to this podcast and just think, oh, fuck, hey, my life's not that bad. Yeah. I'm not those guys. I'll show you what I'm not sitting in like. a shed recording an hour's worth of just absolute shit yarns for no gain at all. Yeah, that's right. You know, because that's, that's, that's all we're doing. We're just sitting here, we're drinking a beer, talking absolute shit in your shed. Yeah, and it works well. Yeah, it's fine. and it does help, and people like it. And so. and and I, I try to think, why do we do it? And that's why we do it for them. Because I think it's for other people to give them perspective, so that they realise that their life isn't that bad because they're not doing what we're doing. And it's kind of good for me to like sort of air out some truth, personal problems. And pretend it's um, under the guise of a character on a podcast. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah, that is good for you therapeutically. Therapeutically. Yeah. This is this because it's like a thousand dollars to go to a fucking psychiatrist these days and admit that you've got heaps of sex and drug problems. Is it? Yeah. And that'll tell you the same shit you tell me. It's all the same shit. You just need someone Shut to the listen. Fuck up, really, stop yeah. being a little bitch. You just need like someone to listen and nod and agree. Yeah. And then put you down. Is that is that what therapists do? I don't know. That's just what I'm used to. We well, fuck. You could at least pay me for this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, goofy foot of the week. So, I kind of went foot themed with this, seeing as though it's goofy foot of the week. We're talking about stance. Mm. Stance is really how your feet are placed on a board. Yeah. Which way? Yeah. Which way your feet are placed on a board. So with this one, I went. Uh, sorry, goofy foot of the week. We have to go through this every time. Mm. So goofy foot of the week is award given to. The best goofy footer of the week, and a goofy footer, they don't. It's not really technically about stance. It's just about the feeling, you know, a, a person, or entity, or thing that really um, encapsulates. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Encapsulates. Yeah. Encapsulation of a goofy footer, high quality people. theme vibe, yeah, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah, um, it's like a gold medalist at the Olympics compared to a fourth place. You know, it's just like the best people. Just the best, just top echelon. Yeah, and and this week yeah. I've given Goofy Foot of the week. Like I said, it was I, I wanted to go foot themed. Mm. I've given Goofy Foot of the week to people who have uh, extra toes. What like six? Like six toes on on one six, foot. Well, okay, so eleven toes or twelve toes, just any kind of extra appendage, really. On the foot only. On the foot. Fuck it. We'll just give it to like anyone who's like got an extra finger, extra arm, just extra, just so, extra appendage. I've never really seen many people with extra. I've seen people with less. 
I did, well, it's easier to have less appendages than more appendages because to have less, you just have to have some accident. And let's face it, a lot of people are fucking stupid mm-hmm. and they and Hurt they themselves. do dumb shit. Like you, when you fell off your motorbike and smashed your face and almost died. Yeah. Like people are doing that all the time. Yeah. But not as many people, unless you're from like the South Island of New Zealand, uh, being born with extra appendages. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so this is nice actually. And it helps the inbreds. Yeah. Doesn't it? It's nice to give them something because well, they why, always get ripped out. That's co- that's kind of why I thought I'd give it to like people with extra appendages or like six toes or whatever it is. So because but they're frowned upon, right? Yeah, like, oh, yeah. They, they're looked down upon their whole lives, yeah. and it's just nice to give them some appreciation. Yeah. You know, they're they're always teased at school, just like oh, your mum and dad, uh, you know, brother and sister, and you this know all that one. sort of stuff, which is of, yeah. which is horrible. But it's like it is actually still very common. A lot of people will benefit from this. You're right. And, you know, that's you've just basically given the whole of Gloria Vale, which is a New Zealand mm-hmm. religious cult on the West Coast, yep. um, Cookie Footer of the Week, because they're all inbred and they've yep. all got extra They're something. big listeners to this podcast, they are actually. massive. Uh, Theo yeah. Vaughn, you know, that American comedian? Yeah. He, he's got Has he ex- got extras? Yeah, he's yeah. got extras. Um and that's just a lovely thing to do. So yeah. that's a good that's a good person to get and, and, and I was doing it because they are they have the potential to be better surfers than anyone else. You have six toes. That's an extra toe you've got on your foot for grip. You know, you can you can hold on. You know, just get that extra little pinky, or mm. it, it might even be mm. a thumb mm. attached to your to your, to your foot. Um, you know, you can really just kind of grasp onto the board a little bit better. Yep. So they do really have those advantages, which uh, often overlooked. I think. And and people need to to look at that and say, hey, maybe these people who have um, parents that are siblings, maybe they actually do have some positive qualities about them, mm. as um, you know, mentally challenged as they are. Is this cap? So do people with an earlobe? Are they? Mm. Is that extra? Because you know, some people just go straight in; it doesn't loop down and under. See how but, mine's proper earlobe. Yeah. What's you got? Have you got an earlobe? Yeah, I got an earlobe. Yeah. You know, some people don't. Is yeah, that considered yeah, yeah. extra? Nah, uh, nah, nah. So they don't get it. Nah, they they still. So the earlobe people and the non earlobe people yeah. are still at war. Yeah, no, it. yeah, no. That's still still weird. Yeah, that's fucking weird. Eh? You it's know, like webbed fingers. Yeah, when you see yeah. someone without an earlobe, you know that there's a little bit of fucking couple of nooks and crannies and skeletons hidden inside that bloodline. You want you want to see that you want to see that family tree drawn out, eh? That, that family do. tree. It doesn't look like a tree either. It's a nah. bush. It's 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 it, just no, it's not it's not a bush, it's not a tree, it's a fucking straight line. <laughs> just straight down, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tree a, with no branches. Deciduous fucking yeah. trunk. Any anyone with webbed anyone with webbed hands or fingers and extra appendages, you know that their family tree is just a fucking no branches on it. It's just a straight log. Is that because everyone's blood's the same? Yeah, it's uh, there's, it doesn't tr- it doesn't branch out very far. So a bush would make it less ancestral. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. If we look at a bush, that's going to have you multiple know, heads at the top. Mul- yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's far and wide. It's yeah, reaching yeah. out far and wide. There's lots of people who weren't related by blood. So that's just mum, dad, kid, babies. Sisters, brothers, all one line, all just straight down. A well, not family. straight down, but it's you know it's pretty, pretty slender. It's so this, pretty slender. So when you look at so you can be like, oh, this guy doesn't. He runs a family trunk. Mm. Yeah. But that's what they do with the royal family, though, because they want a keep family it, trunk. A family trunk, but they try and keep it all within the family. Tactical, which is a smart idea. You yeah. don't want to spread the wealth out too far. And that they are not f- um, retarded enough. For us to really notice, but no, they are a little no. bit. You know, you look at them. Rumors and, and, are there, and, and, and that's why there's always those conspiracy theories about like the royal family being aliens, or yeah. not aliens, but like the royal family being like lizard people and shit. Yeah. And it's not that they're lizards; it's just that they're all inbred. inbred. So they have some of the same traits that a lizard might have, like webbed fingers and toes. Maybe that's why Henry the Eighth and those other kings and that did kill plenty of the wives because they're like shit. Your two tongues are starting to show. You're gone. Can't have that going on. Like it's starting to get too wide. Maybe she had like eight feet and like eight toes and bits and pieces. So it was probably those reasons that he murdered them. Oh, to try and um and keep hide it, it. In, keep it inbred, but not too obvious. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Because yeah, no one's going to follow the king when he's fucking running four eyes. Nah. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. 
But anyway, goofy footer of the week, people Sorry. with extra appendages. And well, natural footer of the week, um, we have to do this. We have to give out a natural footer of the week every week because it balances out. It's, there's a night to win every day uh, and up to every down. Uh, yin to the yang. Yeah. Um, uh, Seesaw, man. And so that's why we give natural footage to just uh, just a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, just someone who who um, smells like cheese, but not good cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like proper off cheese. Yeah, like proper off cheese. Um, like beer that's gone past its expiry date. Yeah. Just really unsavory characters. And so we're sticking with the foot theme. That's why I gave natural footer of the week to gout. Oh, yeah, gout. Yep. Gout is no one's friend. No, nah, gout can eat a fat dick. Okay. Uh, not a fan of gout. Um, gout is also, funnily enough, can be um, found in other parts of the body, such as the elbows. Uh, is it the always knees. joint? Joints. Joints. It's yeah. a it's a joint disease. Um, but so you yeah. can only get it in the little those bits. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 very uncomfortable. Some people, many people, have actually said that it is more painful than childbirth. Gout. Gout, yeah. Yeah, I actually don't think childbirth's that painful. No, no. I mean, I'm birds. sure it's painful, but no, childbirth they, has nothing on gout. And they give them, like, epidemals or epidurals. Yeah, epi, epi, epidecimals. And they put it in their back, and mm. then those people are numb. Mm. And you don't have that for, for gout? No. You can't yeah. just get an injection as like, oh, your gout, the pain of your gout's gone away. Everything from the nipples down will be good now. Mm. It's not the case. You got to walk around with it. What medication do you get for poor look, gout sufferers? Look, sufferers? all I got to say is if I, if I was going through a gout flare up and someone said, do you want me to inject you with an epidecimal in your back and you won't be able to feel below your waist for three days? And I'd say, fucking get it in me. Yeah. Get it in me. It's not, it's not enjoyable at all. There's, there's nothing good about it. It's fucking, it's painful as shit. Every step. Oh, step, you can't step. Oh, real? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, you're not doing much if you've got gout. Are you going to get a flare up now? Oh, well, I hope not. Yeah. I've been taking my medication, but we'll see after this beer. I, I probably shouldn't be drinking beer. There's a lot of things. Heavy machinery, can't operate heavy machinery. Why? Well, I can't, I just can't in general, but, you know, I probably shouldn't on gout, with gout either. <laughs> is, that truly, is that truly a warning? Do not operate heavy machinery. No, that's just a rule that I live by. Don't oh, operate yeah. heavy machinery because I, I don't know how to do it. Fish, set it off. Um, fish? Oh, some, yeah, some types Seafood's of fish. Eh? Seafood does. Yeah, seafood. Shellfish and shit. Yeah, shellfish. Oh, yeah. Um, which is a shame because I love shellfish. Like yeah. eating it. Yeah. Yeah. But... Don't like the mizzen animals. I fucking hate shellfish. No, I don't. Taste they, wise, they don't really have very good personalities. And they cut you. Mainly because they're just... They're, they're nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, gout, you, gout one's natural for the week, and I should have brought it up earlier on this podcast. I feel like I probably have, but I, I think it actually needed an award yeah, to really solidify its place as, as probably one of the shittest things that can happen within the human body. Yeah, one of the worst debilitating illnesses one can get. Yeah. Okay, done. Your questions um, of the week, well, Yeah, we had some questions. I put it out there, and you know, because a lot of the time the questions are pretty bad. Um, I guess because people that listen to this podcast, yeah, they don't have much going on. Upstairs. They don't. They, well, they don't really have much to offer. No, there's, there's not really much to say. You can tell by their comments; they're fucking quite stupid. Yeah, a lot of them are just straight up retarded and people. Kids again. Yeah, it's more children. more kids. What? Well, no, I think they're kids. Like the way that the, they ask they questions, spell and write and shit. Yeah, you'd you'd think that they were children, That's but right. um, hey, honestly, no, just money, retarded people. There's money in retarded people. What, there I, is. It's, it's what, it, you it's, know what? It's it's a lot easier to manipulate retarded people into giving you money than it is to not. And and that's why we we should be monetizing this podcast. I think if we set up some kind of not a crowdfunder, but like a, a had a paywall for this podcast, we could mm. get some of these retarded people that watch and listen to this podcast to pay nine pay, cents or whatever it is. Pay money to yeah. to have a subscription service to this podcast. Um. Cause, I mean, they're fucking stupid enough to do it, mm. most of the people that listen to this. Well, I thought that maybe the this is probably not the time for this, and we can come at it another time, but you could get some of your stupid followers to help you make a movie. I see all the requests. Time for a movie. Time for some long format stuff. Yeah. Time to time to stretch it, stretch your legs a bit more, because you've, what, done four or five years of quality content. Bang, yeah, just bang, small bang, bits. Back to back to back to back. Yeah, yeah. Sk- lots of skit work. A lot of two to four minutes, two to three minutes. Yeah, so if you, uh, you know, branched out for the 10 to 15, mm. 
Um, you could probably get your done ass people to pay for that. <laughs> so you reckon get a whole bunch of these fucking stupid ass retarded people to like chip in and, and and pay to make a whole like full not a feature film but like just whatever the budget yeah. is you get you get is the budget you've got. If if they're stupid enough to give you anything, you only need up with five bucks. Or maybe they're fully fucking retarded and you get like twenty grand. <laughs> well, fuck. And the, I mean, the best thing about that that theory and that business plan is it doesn't even have to be good. It doesn't like, matter. You can fuck it. Like I could film. Oh, I could maybe. film. I could film like a, a ball of twine <laughs> rolling across the floor, and these retards would probably think it was fucking good. And that's the that's the best thing when you when your viewers and your fans are idiots, are suckers, a fucking just low. <laughs> Level. <laughs> Low level retards. You can just fucking throw them anything. We've got people listening to this podcast and watching it now. No that's the level that of that's <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the level that we've got here. Okay? So fuck I'm gonna do it, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna crowdfund this shit, get these retards to pay for it and make it just a terrible <laughs> film. I reckon you'd make a good movie. Yeah, probably. I've already got the the the, the storyline mapped yep. out. What is it? Two best friends, yeah, go on a road trip, go on a surfing weekend. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. I reckon. I reckon. Two guys. Here's my idea for the film that I want to that I want to get when these fucking retards fund it. Is that I want to get. <laughs> I want to get two guys. Two. Okay, so this is a good film. I reckon this is like award winning. Yep. Two guys. Wait, hold on. Here. This far. Wait, no, 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 no. Two guys travel to Indonesia in yes. search of waves, beer, and and food and partying. Yeah, that's right. And what, food and uh, party. Uh, what? Hey, watch it on fuck, YouTube. Not, on YouTube, it's a it's a it's a story about resilience and perseverance through. It could just be like two dudes on a surf trip. Sounds easy, right? Yeah. Question mark. Yeah, there, there's the trailer. I reckon if I made a trailer for it, or, you know, like that, a little short. Make a trailer, yeah. and then off the back of the trailer, yeah. want to see this movie? Yeah. Fund it, you dumb cunts. <laughs> 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 you want to want to see this film? Fund it, you fucking dipshits. Yeah. Yeah. And then no, we'll, we'll, get them all, we'll get them on board, man. Yeah. I mean, you You'd know. You'd be surprised. You might I, end up with, like, a few grand. Fuck, maybe. I mean, you know, there's... When you think about it, there's people who uh, like who will give their money to like scammers on the phone and shit. Oh man, there's people paying a dollar, no, oh, probably eighteen dollars ninety nine to watch some underage woman at college put a butt plug in her bum. Yeah, exactly. And there's people that pay for stab premium. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, anything's possible. That's right. All right, where we at? We're at these fucking retarded questions. Um, uh, someone said um, we should call them reviewers questions. Yeah, no, sorry, review um, viewers, viewers viewers questions or listeners viewers questions. Uh, what were they? There yeah, were look, a couple there. Don't be shy of getting in touch with the Raglan Surf Report. Yeah, don't be shy. Like no we're not going to say anything bad or derogatory yeah. about you if you do yeah. send in a question. Yeah. Um, if you surf, I really appreciate if all the listeners. Well, there we go. We've already answered one. That was one question. Was when it? they're like, "Are you going to ever make a full length surf film?" Or a full-length film. Pay for it, yep. That's yeah, you quick. fucking tards pay for it, then yeah, for sure. Um, if you surf every day, how often do you have a shower? Uh, that's a great question. That is a that is a great question. You so if you to. shower, I mean, you've already done more than enough. Yeah. That's I mean, it. yeah. What that, is what is showering? Yeah. Washing I, I your think body. Show, showering was just a construct that was developed by the government mm. to keep us all in line and, and keep the usage of water um, circulating throughout um, uh, the throughout the the general public, so that we would spend money on water rates, mm. you know, because the government, like local governments here, and even in Auckland, they make a shit ton of money off water rates, mm. you know. Never thought about that. Yeah, so that's why I mean they've been doing it for years. They've been trying to promote the over usage of water, so that they can charge money for for that water for the for the usage of the water. Read your meter, send yeah. your bill. Exactly. Chuck a couple of service fees on there. Yeah. Next minute. And you know, like, I mean, you only really need like, was it? I think half to one glass of water per day to be fine. You don't need eight cups. Nah, you only need half to one. So that's bullshit when they're like, have fucking three liters of water a day. That's another thing by big water trying to get you to spend money on water. 
Yeah, you you can know, tell through your water rates. You just watch a UNICEF ad and you know you don't need that much water to survive. No, exactly. You, yeah, a UNICEF. You can get away with, like, none. Yeah. And the water that they have is, is not very good water either. Yeah. And then they're still fine. Yeah. Like those little, like, kids and third smiling world countries and, laughing and stuff. And yeah, smiling and laughing and having a great time. They always show us that. Yeah. And they're, they're drinking minimal amount of water, and most of it's, like, full of Giardia and Campylobacter and shit like that. Poor kids. They don't you know? realise what they, how dangerous and close they are to death. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say, like, if you're surfing every day, you're completely fine. That's 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 well well over, overboard, really. Yeah. You're way cleaner than I am. Yeah. Um, and then, how do I deal with wave pool locals? And this is something I oh. never really thought of. Um because I don't think you could have a wave pool local. Yeah, like a season pass holder. Yeah, I guess it's a season pass holder. That's the only real. That's the only real way that you could determine if someone is a true local. And I think Shit. wave pools. I think that's what wave pools are going to teach us. Yeah. They are going to teach us what true true localism is. Money. Yeah, because if you have a season pass or say a year long pass to a wave pool, that's kind of like that's. You can't dispute that. No. Like, you are a local, but for anyone else on the planet, how are you supposed to show that you're a true local? Because there are so many different ways to determine what exactly a local is. Like, some people say, you have to be born here. Yeah. You have to have um, had sex with at least five underage local. people. Well, it's not underage, sorry, of local. age people in yeah. that area. Um, you have to, um, you know, have... Be this good You have to wave. have a, a library card to the local library. Oh, yep. There's, like, a whole bunch of different things that you have to, like, all these boxes you have to tick to be a local. But I think with wave pools, we're going to find that all you need to do is get, like, a fucking year pass or, or whatever it is. Um, you know, some of the wave pools will probably have a pass that says locals pass, and then they charge you, I don't know, two grand a year or whatever it is mm. to use the pool whenever you want. So I think that's where we are going to find localism really shine through is at the wave pools. But if you have a problem with localism at the wave pools, I would just say um, pull the plug, turn the wave pool off. Turn the wave pool off. Do you reckon there'll be like priority paddlers and stuff who get like wear like a little yellow red band because they've paid I think extra so. twenty bucks? Yeah, yeah. I think I think they're going to have monetize tiers. every opportunity. They'll have, mem- they'll have membership tiers. Like you're obviously going to have your bronze, silver, and gold, gold tiers. Yep, yep. And you'll probably have like some kind of wristband. If you've got a gold wristband, it means you've paid more money for the wave pool, mm. so that you have priority over everyone else. Yeah, and you can be an absolute fucking douchebag. You can be a full coat. Yeah. And I think that's the only way they're really going to get um, wave pool surfing to the level of real surfing of ocean surfing is by yeah. having like a class system, a class system. like there there is at every surf break around the world. There's a class system. You need a couple of bullies. Yeah, yeah, yelling at everyone. Well, I mean, you know, you're going to take the violence out of it, but mm. you're going to have the class system. Um, but in this regard, it, it will be a monet, monet, monetized class system. Mm. So you'll be you'll be able to pay for it. Do they make those wave pools salt water? Are they salty or are they I fresh? I don't think so. I think they're fresh water. Does that change things? Um, yeah, s- yeah, yeah. Less buoyancy, I think. Yeah. And more chance of scoliosis. Scoliosis. Yeah. Wait, is scoliosis the one that you get from drinking the water with the bacteria? Uh, don't know. It's something like that. I don't know. Don't know. Scoliosis. But like w- um, water, waterborne viruses. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let it use chlorine, though. No, yeah. I don't think. I just think it's straight fresh. Okay. Mm. Pump it round, run it through a filter. Yep. But yeah, I I don't know if there were any other questions. I mean, there probably were, but like we said before, most of them are right. fucking stupid. Because you think about the people that actually watch and listen to this are just no. There's none yeah. on my my. No one's there contacted none. me. Yeah. And I think that's another thing. We're not that getting that many questions because it's not a very popular show. Not yeah. a very popular podcast. No. Uh, we are way down. Uh, the bottom of the totem pole in terms of sport podcasts in New Zealand because surfing is such a niche sport here mm. and no one really gives a shit unless you're fondling the balls of another another man or play rugby. Yeah. Yeah. But um, thanks for watching. And um, we, d- we didn't really mean what we said about... Yeah, that was most just you, most of you guys. It was just off the cuff. Yeah, it was just, we, we appreciate most Sometimes of you. We say uh, most. Most, yes. not all. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening and watching. And um, yeah. Go get some help.